This is one of the best laptops in the world, Samsung's Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, because not only does it have Intel's 13th gen processors, the fastest chip we've ever built, but also NVIDIA 40 series graphics. And today we are gonna compare everything from the design, the displays, speakers, and webcams, all the way to performance, both in benchmarks and real world tasks, along with a couple new tests. As far as price, they are very similar. The Samsung is a hundred is less expensive and it comes with a terabyte of storage which is awesome we're gonna test that out but you can buy the MacBook right now for a hundred dollars less on Amazon links are down below as far as the design and ports you have the classic Mac look and the Samsung also looks very classy and nice minimalist design we have vents here on the bottom I like the color but it is a fingerprint magnet the MacBook keeps the vents on the side so they're not as easily blocked but the Samsung has some big speaker ports that should have impressive speakers. As far as weight, the Samsung is noticeably lighter even though it is made out of metal. And as far as thickness, they are almost identical back to back, but the Samsung does have a more classy wedge shape. As far as ports, I do like the Samsung, it still gives you a USB type A port, but I wish the micro SD card slot was a full size. Both of them have HDMI, but the MacBook has that nice magnetic MagSafe charger and you have three Thunderbolt ports instead of two. On the inside, both of these do have fingerprint scanners to log in, but I really wish that the Ultra had my favorite Windows feature, which is Windows Hello, but it doesn't. One thing it does have is a numpad on the sides over here. So it's so nice to enter uh, numbers having this, whereas the MacBook just has these large speakers. As far as keyboards, the Samsung does have shallower keys, but they do feel quite nice. With that said, the MacBook's Magic Keyboard feels better. And for trackpads, of course, the MacBook has the best trackpad, but I was really shocked at how large this Samsung trackpad is. It is massive. Now it is still a diving board design, uh, but it is nice and responsive. Now above that, we have the displays and this Samsung has a Super AMOLED display that is very impressive. But before we compare them, if you're a Mac or Windows user who does any sort of work with documents, spreadsheets, or slideshows on your Mac or Windows computer, our sponsor Software Keep is giving our viewers 25% off on genuine Microsoft software, like a one-time purchase of Microsoft Office for Mac or Windows, which includes Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now there are so many fishy websites out there that could scam you, but Software Keep is a Microsoft certified partner who sells only 100% genuine Microsoft software, so you don't have to worry, which resulted in Software Keep earning over 100,000 five-star reviews. They also have great prices on other software, including the most popular antivirus software out there. And their customer service is phenomenal with 24 seven, 365 customer support, where you will talk to a real person instead of a robot. So if you have any questions, they'll be glad to help. So buy Microsoft Office for Mac, Windows, or anything else that you need today and save 25% off their already great prices by using the link in the description and the coupon code MTYT25. Now, both of these are 16 inch displays and the Samsung has a 2880 by 1800 resolution, the same as the older MacBooks. Now, this new 16 inch has a higher resolution, but can I tell with my eyes? No, both of them look super sharp. And what's even cooler is the fact that they're using a 16 by 10 and they have a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So everything is super smooth. It could also dynamically switch between 60 and 120 hertz. Of course, with the MacBook, we have ProMotion, so it could do up to 120 hertz, but it can drop down all the way to 24, matching your content, and that saves more battery. Now, since I mentioned battery, the MacBook has a 100 watt hour battery, the maximum amount you can have on an airplane, compared to the Samsung's 77 watt hour. So it's definitely less there as well, and they give you a 100 watt charging brick, which is nice, but the MacBook has an 140 watt, so it does charge super fast. Now, as usual, the battery life claims are very high on Windows laptops, but in terms of real world usage, the MacBook does beat it out. Looking at these displays, I am impressed with the Samsung. Oftentimes with OLED screens, the black should be pure black, but because of the anti-reflectivity, they look gray. But this one does look nice and dark. Now it does have 
more reflections than the MacBook, so that is noticeable in a room like this. I think this is the best OLED screen I've seen on a laptop, and as far as viewing angles, it is better than the MacBook's mini LED display, but in terms of maximum brightness, if you're looking straight on, the MacBook does get brighter at 500 nits. Now, as far as HDR, the MacBook can actually get up to 1600 nits compared to around 500 on the OLED. Now, this video right here only goes up to 1000, but you guys can see the difference, not only in brightness, but also in the detail and the highlights, which is also visible in these dark shots here, where we have a lot of fine detail and brightness compared to something that looks blown out. Now, mini LED can have blooming issues, which does get annoying, but overall, the experience is a lot better, and it's gonna take a long time before OLED can get this bright with dual layer technology. Now, what about the speakers and the webcam? Samsung advertised their really nice quad powerful speakers. Of course, the MacBook has six speakers. So let's go ahead and take a listen. All right, guys, you heard that for yourselves. No matter how you're advertising, the truth comes out. <laughs> well, uh, um, I know some people say you guys don't like Samsung. Well, we gave great reviews to the S23 Smoke, the iPhone 14. A lot of the products are good, but here you guys heard that the MacBook has so much more bass. It's louder, a lot more rich, and it makes for a great movie watching experience. But what about the webcams? Samsung also advertised their really nice webcam, so let's take a look. This is the 16 inch MacBook Pro's 1080p webcam and studio quality microphones quality. And this is the Galaxy Book Ultra's wide 1080p webcam quality, and it also has dual front facing microphones. So let me know which one looked better and sounded better down in the comment section below. Getting into performance, the Samsung comes with one terabyte of SSD compared to 512. So how fast is it? Let's go ahead and run this test. All right, we have our results and the Samsung is way faster than the MacBooks. I thought maybe they could have been cheaper SSDs because they're giving you a terabyte, but no. Now with the MacBook, you can actually get speeds that are faster than Samsung, but you have to spend a lot of money to upgrade to one terabyte. Now with that, one thing that I've never tested before is Samsung's quick share which is the same thing as AirDrop for iPhone. So I wanna see how well does this actually work? Click on the S23 Ultra. I'm gonna start a timer here. This is a 577 megabyte file. That took 27 seconds to transfer. It was very easy to do. So I'm actually impressed, it works well. Wow, 28 seconds for the iPhone using the latest MacBook latest iPhone, and same thing with the Samsung. So AirDrop is no longer exclusive. Great job, Samsung. And now let's compare the CPU performance using Geekbench. The Samsung has a 13700H 14 core 20 thread processor up to 4.8 gigahertz compared to 12 cores that goes up to 3.5. Geekbench 6 is way more realistic for modern loads, so let's see what we get. This test takes way longer with Geekbench 6, but it's a lot more realistic for modern loads. All right, we have our scores, and as far as single core, the MacBook is only 7% faster, but in multi-core score, here we have 10,400 compared to 14,000. That's a difference of 35% in favor of the M2 Pro chip that has a lower clock frequency and less cores. But you guys may have noticed we're running on battery power. And so far the Samsung has been doing pretty good. So let's go ahead and plug in the power. All right, there we go. The numbers went up from 10,000 to 12,500. That's 21% faster if you plug it in. And yes, I did have it set to best performance on battery, but that 12,500 is still not enough to compete with the MacBook's 14,000 being 12% faster and all on battery performance. But what about graphics? We have 19 graphics cores with the M2 Pro compared to the RTX 4050 Studio version. 
which is supposed to be optimized for compute tasks like this. And it looks like the MacBook One, we have 81,700 compared to 69,300. It's a difference of close to 20%. But of course, the uh, Windows laptop is plugged in. So if we go ahead and unplug that and then run it again, we see 47,000. So it's not twice as powerful as the MacBook, uh, but getting closer to there. So yes, if you want the best performance on the Samsung, both CPU and graphics, unfortunately, you have to have it plugged in. Now, what about web-based apps? For example, here we have Figma for web design using a project that our partner 500 Designs uh, made for us. They're one of the best design studios in LA. So here we have a high res website and I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in right here, see how responsive things are. So wow, that uh, was very quick to go ahead and refresh everything, give us the high resolution files. Let's try here, a um, couple seconds, lagging a little bit, bam, kicked in. So overall nice and smooth, this 13 gen does a great job. Let's test out the MacBook, zoom in, start refreshing, bam, also very fast. Maybe slightly faster or maybe the same. I would say it's about on par. And now I selected 12 high resolution layers and we are gonna export this web page. And the MacBook took one minute and 35 seconds, quite a bit faster and doing it on battery. So that's pretty impressive. Now people say, why do you guys do so many different tests? Well, we wanna see the whole picture, not just one benchmark. People say this is the best Windows laptop. It is very nice, but it is definitely hard to compete with the Mac, especially when it comes to performance. Now, Windows laptops are great for gaming, so I'm gonna run 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited to make it completely fair regardless of resolution. The results show as legendary on the Samsung, but the MacBook actually has a higher score, looking at 77.8 FPS compared to 67.3, so roughly 15, 16% better frame rate, so I guess it's also legendary. Now, of course, there are way more games for Windows. They're well optimized. We actually made a dedicated gaming video on these new MacBooks, so you guys could check that out, both running crossover for Windows games and dedicated ones that are optimized like the new Resident Evil. Now, one area NVIDIA graphics are amazing is for 3D rendering using Blender, especially when you enable support for ray tracing cores doing the rendering. So here we have the BMW test, which is probably the most popular one. And let's go ahead and render it. We have ray tracing compared to metal. And look at that difference. We have 40 seconds for the MacBook compared to 14 seconds. Yes, more than twice as fast with the RTX graphics card on the Samsung. This is where it destroys the MacBook. But what about for other creative tasks? For example, I have Photoshop Lightroom Classic opened up right here with 50 high resolution edited images. I went in and I made sure to enable full graphics acceleration for export on the Windows laptop as well. Flipping through files where they have the same settings I have to render each time. The results are pretty much the same after that first photo. Maybe slightly slower on the Windows Samsung laptop even though we have that faster SSD. And now let's go ahead and export these 50 images. And of course I have the Windows laptop plugged in for the best performance. Now as this runs, one of the things I have to mention is the fan noise and the temperatures. On the MacBook, the fans are still off and they've been silent the whole time, which is crazy. Uh, with the M2 Pro, there is the fans are designed for overhead for the higher end graphics. Uh, while this one, I can clearly hear the fans even when running Geekbench. On the Windows laptop, we are reaching actually almost five gigahertz, 4.998, that's five gigahertz compared to 3.3 on the MacBook and we are using a lot more power. I see 55, it's going all over the place, probably trying to keep itself cool compared to using about 37 or so. It looks like each image gets rendered and it kind of slows down. Now let's take a look at thermals here. We have 38 degrees Celsius on the Windows laptop. You guys see that hot spot, and on the Mac 31, 32, Definitely cooler and a smaller hotspot. And the results are in. The Windows laptop took a minute and 32 seconds. Definitely really nice and quick, but the MacBook took 58 
seconds to do that. Quite a bit faster and of course on battery. So for photo editing, the processing power, the unified memory architecture is very efficient. Now, what about video editing? I have DaVinci Resolve 18 Studio opened, which is extremely well optimized for both. And this is a 4K H.265 graded projects with LUTs, film grain, both are playing it back perfectly fine with no issues. Our MacBook's only using about 13% of the graphics, meaning it has a ton of overhead for more effects, multi-cam footage. Now the Windows is using about 36% of that Nvidia graphics card, so it needs more of that performance to do this. And now let's go ahead and export this five minute project and let's see how they do. The Nvidia card is doing not too bad, but the Mac is running faster. The MacBook took a minute 20 seconds compared to a minute and 44. Now, both these are very fast. I have to say I'm very impressed with the Samsung and the Nvidia graphics card. The previous generation, similar one, uh, the 3050 Ti, that would have taken way longer. So this is great. Now, of course, it is plugged in most likely you would be rendering with the plugged in. With the Mac, I typically don't because the performance stays the same, but let's try it out just to see the difference that we get. And that took two minutes and 40 seconds. Not that much longer. Yes, it is longer. That does kind of suck. Uh, but before, sometimes you'd go from three minutes to 12. That would be very terrible. So with all of that said, um, how do these compare? How does the best Windows laptop, how I've seen a lot of people say this, uh, in 2023, very well-rounded compared to the MacBook. Well, in certain cases, it beats it out, but in a lot of instances, for a similar price point with the discounts available now, you do get a better product that will hold its value better, it'll have better battery life, it will perform the same on battery. Uh, overall, I do think it's the better buy as long as you don't need Windows. Uh, but you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What other kind of videos would you guys like to see? We wanna hear your guys' opinion. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right there. For example, the M2 Max compared to an RTX 4090. Very crazy, and we'll see you in the next one.